Questions 48 to 50 in the ASA blue paper. Question 48. So this is another set of pathway questions whereby you start with the precursor amino acid and this is converted via enzymes and intermediate amino acids into an eventual um, all-important growth stimulating amino acid. So in this case we start with glutamic acid and it's converted via a number of steps involving multiple enzymes um, into eventually arginine and it is arginine that allows for growth in this scenario. And at each of these various steps involving enzymes and converting from one amino acid to another, there can be a potential mutation whereby that step breaks down and no longer functions. So um, we don't get that really important conversion of one amino acid to another because of this mutation. So question 48 asks us for the enzyme that describes uh, orthonine transcarbamylase um, and the mutation that is associated with it. So uh, that that enzyme, orthonine transcarbam transcarbamylase, is represented by E2 on the diagram. And if you look at E2, well, that's between the orthonine carbamyl phosphate junction and citrulline. And that corresponds to a mutation of ARG12. So E2 corresponds to a mutation of ARG12. So therefore, D is the correct answer for question 48. Question 49 asks us which of the following does not match an arginine mutant with its growth response. So we're given a series of mutations and their respective growth responses. The most important thing I think to help differentiate which is correct is to ask yourself for every single mutant, what are we, what are we preventing from being formed? Right. So for example, with ARG12, well, ARG12 is just before citrulline so therefore if ARG12 uh, is a potential mutation that occurs well what will happen is we won't be converting orthonine and carbamyl phosphate into citrulline so therefore we will have a deficit of citrulline. As such if we have a deficit of citrulline what we'll need is to supplement that we'll need to give it more to make up for that deficit so therefore if we gave a ARG12 mutant citrulline we'd expect growth um, but if we gave it anything upstream of that uh, ARG12 mutation, that is any sort of precursors that come before the ARG12 mutations, so that extends from not only orthonine carbon phosphate to also uh, glutamic acid and um, and acetyl orthonine, um, that will not result in growth because that will still be blocked by that mutation step. Um, and similarly, anything downstream slash after the mutation step will also need to be supplemented in order to, to produce growth. So to summarize everything, if you supplement a specific mutant with a supplement that is downstream of that mutation slash after the mutation, then you will still see growth. But if you supplement a mutant with something upstream slash before that mutation, then you will still see no growth because none of those precursors can pass through that step. So let's try and answer the 49. Basically, if we have an ARG2 mutation, what we'll get is a deficit of carbamyl phosphate. And carbamyl phosphate is necessary for the step in the production of citrulline. So therefore, we will not produce any citrulline, any arginosacinic acid, any, and therefore any arginine if we have an ARG2 mutation. So if we supplement, therefore, with citrulline, what we'll see is we'll see growth because citrulline is downstream of the mutation. Now, what happens if we supplement with orthonine? If we supplement with orthonine, orthonine needs to combine with carbamyl phosphate to make citrulline. So therefore, if we lack carbamyl phosphate, um, we will not have any of that precursor to produce citrulline. So no matter how much extra orthonine we're, we're pumping into this system, there will be no carbamyl phosphate to combine with, and therefore we cannot produce citrulline under any circumstances. So therefore, we would actually expect no growth if we supplemented an ARG2 mutant with orthonine, and therefore A is the correct answer for 49. For question 50, we're asked to find where a specific ARGX mutation occurs. So... We're told that 
if we if we supplement this specific mutation with citrulline, then the growth will occur. But if we supplement with carbon phosphate, then no growth will occur. Right. So let's go through each of these answers and see which is appropriate. So if it was an ARG1 mutation, but not corresponding to any other mutation as according to A, then what we'd expect is that citrulline and carbamyl phosphate would both not produce growth. And that's because citrulline cannot pass through that ARG1 step and be converted into arginose succinic acid and therefore into arginine. So therefore, no matter how much we supplement with citrulline and any upstream um, precursors, we will receive no growth so therefore we can rule out a b arg12 but not any other mutation so if it was an arg12 mutation yes indeed being supplemented with citrulline would result in growth because arg12 mutations will lack in citrulline as it cannot produce it so therefore supplementing will alleviate that deficit um, and similarly carbonophosphate will not produce growth if supplemented because it cannot be converted into citrulline due to that mutation in the ARG12 step. But the major red flag that you've got to look out for in the answer B is that it states ARG12 but not one corresponding to any other mutation. So we've got to figure out whether ARG12 is the only possible mutation in which this scenario outlined in question 50 occurs. So let's go down to answer D um, to figure out whether D is correct or not. We'll need to figure out if R6 is a possible mutation in which the scenario outlined in the question occurs. So will citrulline result in growth and carbon phosphate not result in growth if supplemented for an R6 mutation? So an ARG6 mutation would lead to a deficit in the end of orthanine and therefore citrulline um, and therefore arginine. So obviously, therefore, as citrulline is downstream of the ARG6 mutation, supplementing with it will result in growth. But again, like in question 49, if we supplement with carbamyl phosphate alone, well, that doesn't overcome the real deficit caused by ARG6, and that is a deficit of orthanine. So ARG6 will result in a deficit of anything downstream of it, directly downstream, and that includes orthanine. Uh, fortunately, carbon phosphate is produced in sufficient quantities because there is no sort of mutation upstream of carbon phosphate, but orthanine, there is definitely a deficit, so therefore... Um, Supplementing with carbon phosphate alone will not result in growth as described by the scenario. So therefore, uh, D is the correct answer for question 50, that either an ARG6 or an ARG12 mutation will result in the scenario described in the question.